Hello, 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 Diamond. So excited to be here. Dr. Sonia is back. You cannot get away from me. I will find you <laughs> no matter where you are. And the reason I'm going to find you is because we have such an amazing podcast today that I just want everybody that's listening to know about this. And I just want to share this information. And I'm being joined by some amazing women today. Uh, Lisa, Coach Lisa Hedelstad, of course, you know her. And, um, and I came together and we made Aquacy. And we had so many amazing students in our first cohort of Aquacy. And we asked uh, additional people to come on today to talk more about it. So this is kind of part two of um, coaches' experience in Aquacy. Aquacy stands for Advanced Certification in Women's Sexual Intimacy. So I'm going to say hello to Lisa, and she can do part of an introduction. And then we're going to ask the other women that are on this call to introduce themselves again. Yes. Hey. Hey, everybody. I'm like, wait, what part of the introduction should I do? <laughs> So Dr. Sonia and I had a training baby together, like she said, <laughs> called Equacy, the um, Advanced Certification in Women's Sexual Intimacy. And, you know, we started talking about this um, over a year ago. And then last January, it's like, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. So let's get on it. And it just came together in so beautifully. The students have been so wonderful. So I'm so happy to have two more of our Aquacy students on with us today. Um, I'm a master coach. I've known Dr. Sonia for a long time. And I also um, taught coaches how to coach for several years, which is how I kind of got involved with this. Um, just because I think, Sonia, you were talking yesterday when we were talking to other um, Aquacy alumni that like coaching is one thing and then teaching is another and um, you had nothing to worry about. You are a natural teacher and a compelling teacher and wonderful, but it's been such an incredible honor and joy for me to be in this program um, with you, Sonia, and then all of the students. It's just absolute joy. Oh, definitely. It's a, an experience like I've never had before. And I'm so excited that we're going to be doing this again. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's super exciting. And so I wanted to introduce to you uh, two new Aquacy alumni. And then also um, Reverend Jacqueline Arnold is back again. Uh, she is uh, in the middle of a thunderstorm watch. So <laughs> she might be coming in and out, but she it, it's kind of like an Aquacy class where we have the noon session and we have the evening mm -hmm. session. And each session is a little bit different from the other. And then, um, so Jacqueline loves to come to more than one session. And I, I think there's also such a bond between all of us um, that we just love to see each other's face. We're definitely, it's just like a big totally. love-in. <laughs> <to Totally. say. laughs> okay, so I will have um, the two new members introduce themselves. And then Jacqueline, if she's not in the middle of a thunderstorm, can also introduce herself as well. So we'll start with Rachel. Hey, first of all, Sonia and Lisa, I am so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me on the podcast. I am Rachel Cunningham, and I'm a life and marriage coach for women who are totally stressed out, and they just want to create more ease in their lives so that they can also prioritize their relationships again and just have create a marriage that they actually love being in is, is what I love coaching on. So um, yeah, that's what I do. That's who I am. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Fritzi. Well, hi, y'all. Um, I, I also would like to express the deepest gratitude for allowing me to come on and share what has meant so much to me but since I've gone through this class and the power that it has given me to express more to other women and touch other women in a realm that I never thought I could be able to touch before. So I am Fritzi Stromat. And I'm a certified Imago professional facilitator, Equus trauma and relationship coach, a certified life coach, and an advanced certified women's sexual intimacy coach. Uh, with 36 years backed up into the experience of a doctorate of occupational therapy, this has been something that I have dreamed to be able to be the ripple effect of women's lives for years to come. I help women who are caregivers of special needs 
to go from isolated to intimately powerful. Ooh, that's so good. Intimately powerful. I love that. I love that. I do too. And I love that you said ripple effect, Fritzy, yes. because we were talking about that a little bit yesterday too. Just how powerful it is to decide to show up or open up to a really, really important topic to women that um, where there aren't as many spaces as we would really like for women to be able to come to, um, to talk about. And one person showing up can help so many people. And also um, as coaches or, or practitioners, as reverends, as, you know, anything that we are, we can also influence other people, other professionals in our own sphere to do the same thing. So the more we do that, the more women get help. So that's amazing. Oh, thank and you. Jacqueline, so glad you're here again. Good evening. I know you all can hear the thunder because it's a terrible storm going on here right now with tornado warnings, but just wanted to be on to see the smiling faces of Rachel and Fitz. So glad to see you all tonight. It was an honor to be here yesterday. It's good to be here today. Um, I am a licensed minister. I am also the founder and um, CEO of Restoration Retreats, which is a business I formed in order to help younger women and older women come together and so the older women could teach the younger. So many questions younger women have that they can't get the answers to. So in this format, we share life experiences in order to help younger women, hopefully not make the same mistakes we've made. Uh, I am also a mother of three, a proud grandmother of 10, and a possible. So I am excited about being here today. Thank you. And we're so excited to have you here. And we should mention also that within the Lit Click Club, Jacqueline handles the 50 plus Queen's Corner. Uh, so she and I do a coaching session once a month in the Lit Click Club, which is geared for women that are 50 years and older, uh, just so that we can talk about life and sexuality and make sure that our voice is heard and make sure that our experience is known as well. So thank you, Jacqueline, in so many different ways for working in this organization. All righty, let's talk more about Aquacy, Advanced Certification in Women's Sexual Intimacy. How good is that? <laughs> Lisa, this awesome. is where I hand it over to you because you are so fabulous. All right. I totally agree. No. <laughs> <laughs> we all Missing agree. the power. Oh, Absolutely. No, I just love doing this. And um, one of the reasons I love that Jacqueline is back today is just because this is so we were talking about this before we started recording the podcast, like how reflective this is of um, the group that we formed of all of these different women from different backgrounds doing really important work, coming together for a common interest and really just finding so much community and, um, and joy, I think, in one another's company. And um, yes, I'm bragging and crowing. Like, I don't know that I, I don't know that I created it, but I think together we facilitated this, all of us, the students and Dr. Sonia and me as an instructor. So it's just a beautiful thing. Okay, so why, here's what I want to ask. Why was it important to you to enroll in Aquacy? Like, what was it that told you, what did you tell yourself in your head that said, I need to sign up for this, I need to do this? And please just feel free to speak up um, and we'll just take turns. Well, I'll go. Um, coming from a very conservative family uh, who believed that sex was for procreating and um, the rest of it was very shameful. Uh, I It was becoming a turning point in my marriage that I've gone, you know, my husband came to me and said, hey, I feel like I'm married to a nun. And I know that there's more out there that maybe you can find a resource and he was listening to some podcasts and he heard about Dr. Sonia and um, some other podcasters that were medically based. And he said, why don't you look into this? And so I did. And so he encouraged me when he found out that there was a course, he said, hey, why don't you just take this? 
it'll maybe help enhance your life coaching and maybe give you some other insight. And when I started looking into it, of course, I was blushed and turned red. And I thought, what's wrong with me? I must be broken. I mean, the shame just came all over me. And when I started investigating and looking into it, Dr. Sonia has placed it and Lisa has placed it in such a safe container, but has a lot of scientific and spiritual backup to allow the opportunity for me to explore and to open my mind with a loving heart to um, embrace the empower within me. And so I felt that that was so valuable that I had to take the course then. And so I was vested at that point. Mm, thank you, Fritz. See, that's such a powerful story. And for anybody listening, for all the diamonds listening, you know, this is so common for us to think that something is wrong with us um, and feel really alone and really a lot of shame. And this is one reason um, Dr. Sonia's work to me is such a, um, such a light in the world is because once we start getting together and talking, we realize that we're not alone. And that in itself can really help dissipate that shame because shame keeps us in ourselves and quiet so often. So mm -hmm. hats off. Amazing. Thank you, Fritzy. How sure. about you, Rachel? Yeah, I, um, you know, I have been coaching on marriage for about three years now. So I've been coaching on sex. And, um, and since I've been coaching, like, if you just use basic, you know, relationship skills that I teach, it can often increase someone's sexual passion for each other. And they can often like want to recreate that passion for each other. But there were times when I noticed that there was something I was missing and the, the issue was deeper. And part of me, because of my traumatic background, I was sexually abused as a child, as a very young child. Um, part of me was afraid to go there. And so I was afraid to go to those heavier spots where they just really didn't want to, and they felt pressured and they felt, you know, they it, tapping into pleasure for themselves wasn't super easy. And so they, they felt this, this guilt and shame around mm -hmm. how they were. And so I knew there was something that I was missing in my coaching. And, um, and so I just, I really wanted to be able to step into my power as a coach um, to the ability that I could. And that's why I was like, when I, when I heard about this program, um, I've been listening to Sonia's podcast for a while and just different podcast and and whenever she spoke about this program and I went to you guys' webinar, I was like, this is for me. I'm gonna be the first to sign up. <laughs> and so it was just like and and I'm so thankful I did because you know it 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 just it 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 showed me just some simple areas that I could improve that like I'm not I'm no longer afraid to to coach on intimacy. I'm I can I can handle any Thing that someone brings to me. And I know when that point is like, I, I trust myself to know when that point is to go, oh, like, let's make sure you're going to talk to your doctor. Let's look in some, to some deeper therapy here. You know, I trust myself to understand the coaching and, and the medical and the therapy is different and, and using all three of those skills to make, to help the person get all the help they need. Like you guys, showed that balance so beautifully in this program. Yeah, that's so amazing. And, um, you know, Rachel, I think I've heard you say in, in class before, and I've heard other students say this too, just like doing the work for yourself, because that's what we did with Aquacy. We had all of the students take themselves through a module first before we ever moved to exploring, you know, how to apply this with clients. And, you, Rachel, and I think a good deal of the other students already had some experience and were actively, you know, relationship coaching or work, you know, talking about intimacy. Yeah. And um, that's the thing, like we can never, I want to say we can never learn enough. But I think what I really want to say is, I think we can never experience ourselves enough as sexual mm -hmm. beings, because mm -hmm 
every, you know, whether it's every year or every life stage we move through or every new way we address it, we're always changing and bumping into old stuff that maybe needs to be worked through or released. So thank you for saying that. Yeah. And one of the things that's interesting is uh, 15 years ago, I was a birth doula. And so I was teaching women all the time about their bodies and understanding their bodies and loving their bodies and how magical and beautiful they were. And for some reason, like after I stopped being a birth doula, I didn't incorporate that into my marriage coaching. Mm. But with you guys, it was like an aha moment. I was like, oh, I, I can use the same thing of like helping a woman absolutely adore and love and respect her body in marriage coaching as well. And, you know, I, I don't think I've told you guys that, but thank you for helping me like have that aha moment. I can take those same skills that I was using 15 years ago and apply them to this as well. That is so beautiful. Ah, thank you. Jacqueline just, oh, sorry, Sonia. (laughs) I was just checking in with Jacqueline if she wanted to add anything. I do, um, because I wanted to share some things that I felt to yesterday. The importance of this class for me was learning even more about myself, but it was a part of my healing journey because I came in a broken woman from an unhealthy marriage. And a lot of women go through this and then they feel bad about themselves. They blame themselves for everything that has gone wrong. And so, and part of my ability to help other women that I minister to, I needed to be healed. I needed to be the whole woman who loved herself, who understood her own sexuality in the religion. And it doesn't matter what denomination, sex is a taboo subject. And I want to free women up and let them know that they are beautiful and they are sexual beings and they do deserve to be loved. So this course was extremely important for me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And thank you always. Um, I think, you know, it, it just astounds me that sex is still a taboo subject in our day and age. And then on the other side of that same coin, it's like this shock and awe factor, right? It's what we use to sell everything and to titillate people into making decisions and stuff. And it's, it's, a, um, you know, I've been with Dr. Sonia long enough where she can be in front of audiences of, you know, very mature, sophisticated, well-educated women that have probably been in many relationships, um, I committed and, you know, all of that and pull out her vulva puppet (laughs) or Goldie, her little gold Mm -hmm. (laughs) clitoris. And all the women are just riveted because we don't hear it talked about like this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We just don't hear it talked about like that. We hear it talked about as though it's taboo or naughty or something that we really shouldn't be talking about, but we're going to be naughty now. So I think there's such a value to hearing people talk about it, frankly, and honestly. And um, it was like me being in Aquasi with all of you students and talking about it weekly, twice a week was my own immersion into that Mm -hmm. and just was a phenomenal um, experience, a life-changing experience. I think about intimacy a lot differently than I used to. I think that it's like, it spirals down in terms of, in a good way, right? But in Mm -hmm. terms of like, you experience it, you start thinking about it, you process it, and then you go to a deeper level. And I mean, I'm teaching the course and I'm still processing about my own sexuality, right? And I've been doing this for a number of years now. And then you kind of incorporate it. And like Rachel was saying, you start to pull things from your past and bring that into your concepts now about sex and sexuality. You're healing your relationship with yourself because so often, maybe not intentionally, but women are taught that there's shame around their sexuality in some way. And especially if their sexuality is not for somebody else. Like if it's a gift for somebody else, then it's okay. 
but if it's for themselves, if it's for their own pleasure, then something is wrong and they should not go to that place. And, the, and it brings in a lot of shame and other things there. So when we have the opportunity to do this work for ourselves, it's so important because how can we talk to somebody else? How can we talk to our clients if we're stealing, still dealing with that that shame, that brokenness, whatever is there, right? So it is this process of healing that we do again and again and again over a period of time. And it's like layers of healing, you know, like band-aids that we're putting on top, you know, um, till we get to this place where we are healing the relationship with ourself. If our fundamental relationship is one that's based on shame with a part of our body, you know, what, what is that teaching? teaching us about ourselves right so it's about, yeah yeah if we don't like something we dissociate from it yes yeah i mean just no matter what it is you exactly. know so if you don't like something just dissociate from it and right. then there is neglect yeah within the self mm -hmm. exactly and then we're like okay how quickly can i have this sex and get it over with so i could do something else that's not you know, put me in a place of shame or, or stress or whatever that my thoughts are around sexuality. Right. And then you've got like the two second, you know, sexual intimacy, which is not really intimate. Right. Uh, it's amazing how you can put body parts together and it can be the most disassociated, non-intimate type of, of almost like a procedure. If you're not in this place where you're, um, welcoming if you're comfortable with yourself and you feel like you have that loving relationship with yourself. Yeah, and it's so holistic to um, what, what Rachel said about bringing um, body image work back into her coaching is kind of flowing together with what Fritzy just said about dissociating from body parts that we like because sex coaching or working, um, you know, coaching or having conversations about sexual intimacy isn't you know I think sometimes you hear that and you're like oh you teach people how to have better sex but at the bottom of it like the fundamental layer is really just another part of teaching women how to have really loving relationships with themselves first yes. and foremost yes, yes. yes. And, and to be able to advocate for yourself mm -hmm. to be able to communicate and advocate for yourself and so many not just in the bedroom but in all of the relationships but mostly in the bedroom, because that's the least thing we want to talk about. It is. I think if you can advocate for yourself there, mm -hmm. um, you can advocate for yourself anywhere. But the skill is universal. And that right. too, it's just built on a foundation of really loving yourself. And if we're not talking about a really important function in our life, if we're not talking about sexuality and our body's sexual anatomy, our body as a whole, but also our sexual anatomy, like it's, it's like we have something in our life that we barely even know. Yeah. That well, but we're walking around with for our entire life and we don't know. We but don't it's like, know. it's like it, the brain has it as a component of it in the homunculus. And when we don't honor that and connect it to the bottom end of the anatomy, then it it feels like there's some a part of its pieces missing of, of the whole brain's being. So connecting it and being able to feel that whole pelvic region and to be able to feel the intimate aspect of your whole body it only brings a whole mind into perspective of whole health. Hmm. Thank you for that perspective. Like I love, <laughs> this is what I love when you bring um, people with that are um, already educated in certain areas and how they bring aspects of intimacy coaching together. And um, like, I feel like I'm through your languaging, Fritzy, learning something new or a new way to think about it and a new way to teach it. Well, if you see an amputee, because in occupational therapists, we see amputees, and when somebody has a limb that's cut off, they still feel it, mm -hmm. even though it's not there. So the brain is still feeling it, even though you've dissociated from it, it still longs for that piece to be connected. Mm -hmm. That's so... Mm. 
poignant. Like, I'm just like, I need to think about this. I'm just going to be quiet for a while so I can absorb that. <laughs> because it's true. And I have never, ever thought of that. So I'm going to uh, switch gears while um, Lisa's processing, because I think it's important that we have time to process. It's one of the things you do in advocacy. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you all about boundaries. Like, what was it like? I know for me, when I first started, I have a history of sexual abuse as well. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to coach around sexual abuse when I started way back when. Um, and so uh, it seems like a millions of years ago, but I, I remember at that time that I was like so concerned that I would not be able to coach on it. I would not be able to help. And also that I would be triggered. Of course, I was in therapy and I've taken care of a lot of that aspect of things, but um, either would any of you like to talk about like your boundaries in terms of what you decided to, how you would coach on and what you wouldn't necessarily and how that might have changed over a period of time going through this course, what you might have been concerned about coaching around at the beginning and you're not as worried about now? You know, I was, um, I, I will say like one of my favorite parts was that you guys gave us permission to have boundaries. It was like, I, th that was one of my fears was, am I going to go into this? And now I'm going to be expected to coach on everything and anything. And you guys gave us permission to say, look, you get to choose what you want to coach on and, and create your own boundaries through your own wisdom on this. And I never, not once felt unsafe in class. And you guys held that space so well of, of letting me feel safe to share. I always felt safe to either share or not share share. I always felt safe to ask questions. And, and specifically with the boundaries, um, you know, there, I was, my biggest fear was coaching on trauma. And because I was afraid that I would be triggered. And, and I had done so much healing in my own life of from, from my, my childhood abuse that I didn't want to be triggered anymore. I was like, I'd already been there. I've, I've, done so much healing and I'm afraid if I dig in deep, I'm going to uncover something that might still be buried there. But um, I will say that throughout your program, it was one more step in my healing. I didn't feel triggered. It was actually, it was one more step in my healing to where I can trust myself to be able to coach someone who has even been through trauma. And I'm not going to take her through a whole therapeutic thing if she's never had therapy. I'm going to, that's my boundary. If she's never had therapy to really unpack the trauma, I'm going to say, you're probably not the client for me. But if she has had therapy and she says, this comes up sometimes, I'm not afraid to go there with her anymore. And I, and I trust myself to know where I can coach and where I need to send her back to therapy. So I think that was one of my boundaries at first, like, oh no, I could never do that. And I remember myself even 10 years ago, just saying, I could never coach on sex. Like, because I remember someone telling me, you know, something is sometimes when you heal from something, you're a great person to help others heal from it. And I was like, oh, but I could never do that. But after Aquacy, like, I'm, I'm not afraid to go there anymore because I trust myself to honor my boundaries. And I trust myself to know that line of, okay, I can coach on this. Or, okay, this is where you need to go get some other help. Agree 100%. Yeah. You put that safe container to provide as the advocacy for ourselves. Again, it's that advocacy to set those boundaries to say what we can and cannot, you know, coach on and what we feel comfortable and to refer. Because there are people that, you know, if we get into a, a position where we feel that it's, you know, not our place, uh, that we would be the best advocate for that client is to refer because we have a network now to refer to mm -hmm. and we know where people have come from and how they've been trained. Yeah, thank you. I think, um, you know, when um, before the program started, when we were doing some publicity, like some posts and things on on social media, somebody asked, like, are you going to teach how to address this? And it just felt so good to say, yes, this is an important part. 
And um, we have Dr. Kimry Newsom, who is, um, Sonia can say more about Dr. Kimry because my brain isn't going to remember everything. But that was one of, as an instructor, one of my favorite modules too, because um, I think for a lot of us, you know, and, and our understanding of trauma is really developing. But for a lot of us that went through coach certification, it didn't get addressed. And there's always this fear that I'm either going to trigger a client, I might get triggered myself. And that fear for sure creates boundaries that we don't even see and keeps us kind of tiptoeing around the issues. And um, yeah, so it's, I love hearing both of your answers to that great question. Um, yeah, Sonia. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say for Lisa and I, when we created Aquacy, it was very clear that we wanted to make sure that we address this issue, that mm -hmm. we would help our coaches, our healthcare providers know like where their role is and when to refer out and not to worry about taking on too much because it's very simple. Like you don't have to make it complex. Uh, like has the patient or has the client had previous trauma therapy? You know, have they, it, that's like the key to all of this is to make sure that they've had some, something like that. And they can bring sometimes a person needs to be in communication, conversation with someone they trust to bring up the concept or something that has happened to them in the past, but they, they need to be in a trusting situation, which can be provided in the coaching you know, environment for them to start the conversation. But it's important that they do get the therapy that they need. And so that's where we're going to make sure that they get the therapy. If they've been doing this work for a long period of time with therapy and things like that, then yes, we'll discuss more of the coaching. We don't necessarily have to go back to that exact moment when the trauma occurred, but we can help. And Dr. Kimberly Newsom, she's a marriage and family therapist for the last uh, 20 years. She also has specific training in trauma, extensive around sexual trauma as well. And then also sexual addiction type of things. She's had additional training in as well. So we made sure that she came into our program and actually gave lectures and, and did um, a coursework on you know, what can we handle? What we're, can we not handle when to refer and also to start building that network? So that was definitely something that we wanted to address. I think it's something that whether you're coaching around sex, if you're some sort of coach, trauma will come up and we need to be able to know what to do and need to understand that we don't need to have all the answers, but we do need to be able to support the client and also make sure that they're getting the services that they need with therapy. Yeah, 100%. And I think sometimes as coaches, because people hire us for, for different reasons, we may have a niche or, you know, whatever, but somebody may hire um, Rachel for some marriage counsel counseling and not even, or marriage coaching, relationship coaching, and not even be thinking about trauma. And it can still come up, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, um, as coaches, we might be the one person that helps a client recognize the possibility that there's some trauma there that they could work through with a therapist if they never have before. And to me, that too is a it's a gift. Mm -hmm. And to be able to just know how to recognize it. And I think um, I can't remember if it was you, Rachel, or you, Fritzy, that said we have a network now. One thing that was really important to us in Aquacy is bringing the students together, of course, to network with one another, but also starting to build a network for coaches of people who um, to reach out to, to ask questions, perhaps to refer to if, if a therapist or a specialist is needed. Yeah. And, and that's something that's also important for us with Aquacy is that we don't like just give you a certificate and send you on your way. Like you're part of the family. We are connected. Uh, we have get togethers and we're working on like monthly alumni type of calls so that we can stay connected and we can talk about things and we can make sure that um, information is still getting out and being shared and that there is this network, which is only going to grow because we'll be having our next cohort in September, the end of September. So this is just going to get bigger and bigger and, and, it gets to be part of a conversation, a larger conversation that coaches and healthcare providers get to have around sex and trauma. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I That's want to add part. one of the advantages of being in the founding class is being able to find out there's a safe space to be with women who you where there's no judgment. Uh, I feel like it was more than just sitting in a class. It was like sitting around a kitchen table, talking to good girlfriends and asking all those questions you always wanted to know. So for anybody who ever takes this course in the future, I know they'll find each class the same way. There's a connectivity with women that you can't find anywhere else in the world. And this class, oh my goodness, it brings on that safe connectivity where you can find out who you are and you can find out that you're not alone in existence of things that other women have gone through. And it's fun. <laughs> and it's yes, fun. fun. There is so much fun. I mean, that's that was one of the things that I was going to say is that my favorite part of Aquacy is that I've got the I was had the ability to go from none, the none that I was, to fun. And and just in five short months, the fun I've been able to explore and to discover and to uh, learn because there's so much vital information that each but uh, each person brings to the group and that I'm not the only one that's feeling this that I am not I belong to a group of people that in this age group that I wasn't the only one that was taught this and we get the opportunity to choose how we want to move from here and that's the beauty of having fun in your relationship now. You don't have, I mean, you got kids, but you, you know, they're grown in this age group. And we get to start exploring and having fun within ourselves if we've lost a spouse or if we are single or if we're just needing an intimate time with our own self. We have that opportunity to throw some beautiful petals in the water and light some candles. And we learn that that's okay that that is part of us as women, that we get to have that opportunity. And that's beautiful. That's that's what Aquacy is about, is the, the fun that you get to experience and learn and to know that there is a scientific medical ba basis and evidence that proves that we are sexual beings. And that's not something to be ashamed of. Yeah. I'm I'm going to cry because to have Fritzy say that, like when I think when we first started working together, Fritzy, to where you are now, that like to be like, you want to have fun with yourself, throw some pedals. At, like, and get, <laughs> it's just so wonderful because like, that's, that's kind of like my dream come true to, to help women like just find their their power, their sexual power, and to, to release the shame and to connect with themselves in so many different ways. And of course, like, I'm sorry, but this marketing thing from none to fun, you know, <laughs> like, like, I'm going to use that. <laughs> <thing. Right. laughs> and it's not N-O-N-E, it's N-U-N, right. the none. <laughs> There's so many different parts. It is N-O-N-E and it is N-U-N. Right? That's <laughs> right. None going on here. <laughs> and it's so much fun. <laughs> and like, I'm almost inclined to like, have you send me a picture of your partner and his smiling face too. Like in addition yes. to all the benefits that you have just with yourself and your own, you know, relationship with yourself, which I think is... Um, like the primary relationship that I'm always focused on when I'm working with women, but also just the benefits that's there with um, how it may impact relationships overall. Um, and, and not just sexual relationships with your partner, but also like you show up in this world a different way. And the way you show up is so helpful for other people. And like just the, your comfort level, because you spend 10 weeks talking about sex, 12 weeks talking about sex, right? That it's so much easier to just talk with friends and family or somebody else, you know, about sex without having that shame. And when you are transformed and you are like talking about this without shame, that gives such a gift to somebody else. Absolutely. I've had that transformative experience. 
sitting a mom in front of me while I had her disabled child in my lap and to see her cry when I said, you need to take care of yourself. What do you do to have that intimate time with yourself? And she goes, I don't know how to do that. That's a long journey of life to not know how to take care of your own self and to explore and just to advocate for yourself to the significant other to say, hey, I need to take 30 minutes to take a bath with petals. I promise I won't put the blow dryer in the water. <laughs> it says that on the label. Do not put electrical devices in the water. <laughs> so it's very important that women know that they can advocate for themselves to take time to be intimate with themselves because those neurochemicals will change their mindset so much that they can go from that disorganized, chaotic, overwhelmed place mm -hmm. to a place of being okay. Yeah. I mean, if we bathe the brain with oxytocin and yes. dopamine, ooh, <laughs> you know, ooh. the world doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> oh, no, man. You can cut a big fat thing in the butt, just getting it going. You can take, you can take care of so much more when you're in a great place in your mind. And sometimes it just takes time to take care of yourself for that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so important too. You know, I had a client come to me a few months ago and she said, I want to work on my sex life, but I'm not ready to go there yet. Are you going to make me schedule sex and stick to it? And I said, no, we're going to chuck the schedule right now. And we're going to work on your relationship first. And, and when I say work on your relationship, I mean, first of all, work on your relationship with yourself and then with your partner. And like that, that's like before we schedule sex or any, any of those tools that we hear about, right? We have to deal with like the hearts first and making sure you're connected first and feeling safe with yourself and safe with your partner and, and connected in all the other ways. And it's, it's fun when someone comes to me and says, oh my gosh, my relationship is amazing. We just need to work on our sex life. That's fun. But it's not often. It's it's like we usually have to work on some nuances in the relationship before we get to that, you know, that incredible sex life. But like knowing it's possible, knowing that 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 um, it can start with you is so beautiful, right? You can start feeling your own pleasure while you're learning to connect with yourself, and then trusting that that's going to overflow when you want it to if you want it to, right? Yeah, I love so much about what you're saying, Rachel. I mean, consent is such mm -hmm. an important topic that we talk about. And then the zone of sexual safety where we're talking about making sure that you yourself and your clients, everybody in this feels safe. Not where, like I've, I've coached women where they've come from other programs where um, they're like relationship coaching where somebody had this brilliant idea I'm not going to say, but I <laughs> had this brilliant idea that if you had scheduled sex every single day for 30 days, at the end of the 30 days, you'll be in such a great place that everything will be better, right? And, and so what you're essentially doing is making people stay to a schedule. And this consent is not necessarily there. By mm -hmm. the end of the 30 days, the woman was just so miserable and her partner didn't really want to ever have sex again, right? So <laughs> like they had like more damage was done as opposed to just saying, hey, if you're not wanting to have sex at this point in time, that's fine. Let's work on you. Let's work on your connection with yourself. Let's work on setting up that trust, that connection, that communication again and let's focus on you and your body learning about your body and pleasure and then we'll see where we go from there right as opposed to this pressure where like it's artificially set up and people are just that I, like that's I can't. just it, it, I mean to do this sex is something that you know I would never want to encourage like I can clean my toilet bowl every day too for 30 days and I'll have a really clean toilet bowl but I will not enjoy cleaning it anymore <laughs> than I did in the first place but I can just imagine um to what you just said Sonia and Rachel like how women's shoulders must drop in mm -hmm. relief when we can give them the space to have their real experience it's like 
if you are avoiding sex or feeling like, you know, you like you need some help there, let's drop all of the pressure to perform to some, you know, whoever is saying whatever needs to be done. And let's just work on you. To me, that is the way to improve anything in your life is giving yourself permission not to have to. Yes. You know, when you take that pressure away and just start, um, like, I always tell my clients, sometimes we just need to get around or get underneath something and not like try to, you know, bulldoze it out of the way or go over it. Yeah. And giving yourself permission to not have sex is like, it's, there's so much shame there that, that we have to, as women drop, right? Because we are so, we're taught so much that our bodies are for other people. And as it's our duty, especially if we're married to a a man, it's our duty to pleasure him. And so like dropping that shame and allowing yourself to say, I'm, I'm not going to do this out of expectation or duty. You know, that's, that's, that's the first step in actually wanting to. Yeah. Yeah. I think also the advantage of this course is that it reaches out to women in all walks of life and all stages. When you get to the queen's corner, you're with women who may be widowed or separated. They may be single all their lives. But this course reaches every aspect of a woman's life. And so teaching her that she can enjoy her own body, that it does not necessarily have to be a a partner there to do it, but she can take care of herself and love herself sexually. Yes to that. Yes, 100%. That's something that's so important is that our sexuality, our body is meant for us. And then we choose if we want to share it with somebody else. But fundamentally, like our primary relationship is with ourselves and we deserve sexual pleasure, whether whether we're partnered or not, you know. Absolutely. Right. And I I think that when those were very valid points and that sex is not just about penetrative sex. No. That Mm -hmm. sex is, there's so much more to it that everyone thinks that it's just about the penetration but there's you don't to have sex you don't even have to have penetration it's just it, it's about pleasure there's so much an intimate connectedness that that's just like the icing on the cake if that's what you prefer that there's so much more to that intimate space and you know that intimate space is so much um that can be explored and to be learned and things that we don't know about ourselves, which is a shame that we need to learn more about. Because if we can advocate for ourselves for what we want, then the stating, you know, that statement of you got to be an eight to penetrate makes it even the best above. Oh, good. Yeah. And I'm just thinking about this statement. I have not heard this statement. So I'm going to ask. No, I, I know. I was like, what was that? I need you to repeat that statement. I need to hear about this, more about this. You need to be an eight to you, penetrate. Tell me more about this. You have to be just at, the woman has to be able to advocate that when she has to be at eight to a 10 before you can come in. Oh, in terms of oh, like her level of pleasure. Yeah. Yes. And her yes. level of pleasure, she has to be an eight to a 10 to be able to come in because that's, you know, she needs to have that opportunity mm-hmm. to go to that next level. A hundred percent. I love that. Yes. Yes. As, I'm a gonna... former, as a former nun, you know, a, a lot more lingo than me. There's been a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Learned a lot from Dr. Sonia. <laughs> yep. And, None the fun. And, and none to fun. Here we go. <laughs> Lots of exploration now because it's been fun through aquacy and learning so much. There's been more exploration. And I really didn't know that there were so many different podcasts that are, that are uh, you know, scientifically based medical podcasts on this kind of stuff and learning more about the body, my body. Yes. And knowing all the different things about what it can do and what it enjoys. Yeah, and I'm going to ask, like, 
sometimes we think that sex ends at a certain stage, like after your Mm -hmm. 30s and into your 40s, somewhere around there, and we start heading into our 50s. But we need to understand this is really only the beginning. In fact, like we are focused on this heteronormative concept around sex and sexual intimacy. And then we actually start to expand and think of it in so many different ways. And it's like, there's like, there's, if there's no limit to how you get to define sexual intimacy and how you get to be sexually creative around this. Um, so yeah, it's just the beginning of it all. And Absolutely. How many, how many toys there are, like that's something you taught us, Sonia, is that how many toys there are to enhance our pleasure, no matter what stage of life we're in. Or what stage of life our partner's in. Like, yes, it does not matter because if, if yeah. we happen to have a partner that is a penis owner and, and having some difficulty with his penis, then traditionally the concept is it, it's all over. It's at an end, but it's really only at a beginning. You know, there's so many different ways to interact sexually and to have pleasure around this. And you get to as long like it's all we have to do is just drop these concepts and give ourselves permission and explore and create. And, you know, if the focus is, I always put the focus on pleasure and satisfaction and connection. That's all that's required for sexual intimacy. And then it's kind of go, you get to create it yourself. And we got to remember about desire that the desire changes as we get older. Yeah. Because there, we have to, if we're responsive, you know, as opposed to reactive in our desire because you know little bunnies running around young young bunnies i mean that's all about procreation and all those hormones and but as the hormones start diminishing as we get older i mean there, there's responsive we have to kind of rev the engine a little bit and get get it to going and start having thoughts and little tweaks and and it's it's a beautiful thing to receive a text and that that just says hey there's a gift on the way Ooh. You know, hey, bring the box. What <laughs> box? You know, just those kind of things that kind of just gets the engine to rev and just think they're thinking, or I'm, you know, I'm thinking of them and I want them to be excited about, you know, coming home or whatever. So there's there's so many different things that can go into, but it starts, you have, you know, there's a desire, but that has to be, you know, kind of primed. Yeah. You know, when it comes to our age, but that's okay because we can prime our own, you exactly. know, our motors. Yes. So good. Yes. Yeah. So you get to prime the pump. You get to, you know, you get to just take responsibility for your sexuality and from a place yeah. of joy <laughs> as opposed to shame. Absolutely. 100%. Mm-hmm. All righty. Lisa, any more questions we have here? I would like, I have so many other questions, but like you said at the beginning, this is like the second part to talking to the students. And um, as Jacqueline can also attest, this conversation was totally different than the one we had yesterday. And this is what I love about the dynamics of just meeting with people on different times in different combinations and what we all have to bring to the table. So here's what I'd like to ask um, in wrapping up. And really, you all, this is for any women, any of um, the diamonds listening to this particular show who work with women in some way and may might be at this point asking, I wonder, you know, is this training for me? What, like, what would you tell them? Oh, I would tell them a hundred percent. This, this training is for you. If you are a woman, this training is for you, no matter what your background is no matter what your profession is in, no matter where you're coming from, this course is for you because it gives you that one night a week to come together and belong to a group of women that you can explore in a safe container who you are. Thank you, Fritzi. Yeah, and I would I would just add to that and just say it's it's for you if like, if you, I love to kind of just tap into your body. I'm, I'm not a, like a high pressure coach, like, you know, go join this. I love to like, just give yourself permission, just like we would teach like for sex, like give yourself permission to say, do I want this? Mm-hmm. And if the answer is yes, it is absolutely worth it to go get it. 
So it's, it's, you know, it's a program that is going to meet you where you're at that is not going to pressure you, that is going to teach you, that's going to um, inspire you and, and help you feel connected to a part of you that um, might wanna come alive, whether it's just in yourself or in teaching others. And it's such a beautiful program. And Sonia and Lisa do such an incredible job of letting their hearts lead in teaching this program. So yeah, I would say if you want it, go get it. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, like uh, Sonia and I, neither of us sell based on FOMO, right? Like that's just like feeling pressure to come into a program. Um, you know, there's there's positive pressure of challenging ourselves when we kind of have an idea that we might like it, but we feel kind of like, oh, I don't know if I can handle it. That's one thing. But um, yeah, to to pressure oneself to get something because you're afraid if you don't have it. But I just think that the skill of having conversations about women's sexual intimacy is never something that we can't use and we can continually um, strengthen it and use it in our business and yeah. use it in our own lives. Um, yes to everything you said. Thanks, Rachel. And I think also the fact that the course covers so many aspects of a woman, it teaches you to love yourself it teaches you about the parts of your body that you never knew uh, about, period, not less ask anybody about. Uh, it works with your spiritual, your mental, and emotional health. So it covers every aspect of a woman. So it's important for every woman who has the opportunity to take this course if it's if it's just for her and she not she's not doesn't have clients or anybody to minister to but just to make a change in her own life that's important and you can go from none to fun <laughs> absolutely <laughs> And it's so fun to just see how many different types of people are in here. Like when I when I joined, I thought, oh, this is just for coaches. But no, it's for coaches and therapists and doctors and and teachers and and mothers and you know, spiritual leaders and I mean, yeah, and Reverends. ministers. And it's so fun to see. And it's so important, right, to to remember that every if you are talking to women, this coach is going to benefit you. You know, if you're talking to women on a regular basis, you are going to learn so much in how to help them more, no matter what you do. So even and if it's just know, a good girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, well, but I mean, even I, we went on a girls weekend retreat with my cousins and my sister, it was just family. And I was telling them things that they had no idea and no concept. And they were like, where are you coming from? And they're like, you know, you were the nun. And I was just like, yes, but do you realize? And do you know? And and that that was the fun part of just sharing. Just sharing. It's that ripple effect of sharing that they can be all that they want to be no matter what. Yes. And I think this all, you know, what I think is so beautiful is just that this all came from Sonia's dream of impacting the sex lives and the lives of a hundred million people is what she said. But like just mm -hmm. every woman or as many women as possible. And there's no way that one person can be the center of that or do it all by themselves. It takes all of us. And so I'm just sitting here getting chills as you're all sharing what's relevant to you about this program. It's an amazing program. And if you have the chance and you feel the calling, you don't have to be a coach. You can you can share it with just yourself. But what about your daughters? What about the one your loved ones that you really want to impact their lives from here on out that you missed out on, that you can, are now picking up the pieces to try to start having that fun at this age? It may save a lot of marriages. It may save a lot of connections and relationships. You're here. Well, I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for being here, for talking about accuracy and coming on and just explaining 
what your experience was with Equacy. And thank you for the work that you're doing out in the world. And I just love the fact that you take the information that we gave you in Equacy and you go with it. And you are, you are part of the ripple, right? You are out there impacting other women's lives. So thank you so much for all you do. And uh, Diamonds, I don't even have anything else to say. These women are so amazing. <laughs> Lisa, I'm like, why am I here? It's so (laughs) wonderful. (laughs) Well, that is because of y'all and your and your insight and your heart and what you your vision of what you wanted to create because you saw a need and you didn't take no for an answer. You you said yes to making this happen. So I appreciate everything that y'all, all the hard work and the hours and the dedication. To providing us with the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All righty. So diamonds, this this is Aquacy. This is we would love to have you in the next next cohort, which is September 29th. We start, and in the show notes there will be um, links to get on our wait list and we'll let you know when accuracy is open for enrollment. And thank you all for coming once again. And I love that. Thank you all for coming. (laughs) 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 Some of us came twice. (laughs) (laughs) All righty, Diamonds. Dr. Sonia out. Lisa and Rachel and Fritzy and Jacqueline. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you.